walking into a thicket of cane poles. Scary. It's like all bright and hot outside and then you walk into the thicket of cane poles into the mystery of summer darkness. I don't care who you are. It's scary walking into a thicket of cane poles. My face is all right, so I've got a really honest question. Seriously. Do you watch YouTube conspiracy videos? That's what I thought. Me too. There's all kinds of reasons why conspiracy YouTube videos are so popular. But there are some very positive reasons, sort of positive, is why people like conspiracy theories on YouTube. Some of them are extremely well made. I mean, it doesn't really matter about the information. The information can be total bogus, but they're entertaining. They're fun to watch. Some conspiracies, they're just believable. They're believable because we've lost a lot of trust in our government and our leaders in general. So when we hear certain conspiracies, we tend to believe them because they're logical. There's all kinds of conspiracies that have turned out true. And I'll put some conspiracies in the links below that were conspiracies and now we know they're not conspiracies. Kind of crazy. I don't want to hear any more about a conspiracy. But another reason why conspiracies uh, are popular uh, is because they play off of our fears. What we are afraid of, what we fear the most of instability or some form of losing everything or some form of losing our identity. I don't guess I really have a phobia. I'm a little scared of heights now that I fell seeing that video a few times here on this YouTube channel, so I'm not gonna post it again. Okay, maybe once more. I don't know when you'll get this. Seriously, I'm not that scared of anything in particular, except passive aggressive people. But the way passive aggressive works is that if I talk about passive aggressive and not liking passive aggressive people or how passive aggressive people annoy me, well, it makes me passive aggressive. So we'll just skip that one. One of the most fearless people in the world when I was a kid was my father. He wasn't scared of anything. When I have a nightmare, he was always there. When I was up against the bully, he was always there too, telling me to hit the bully back. He's a tough guy, a Vietnam veteran. He was fearless, fearless. So dad, when you were in Vietnam, were you ever, were you ever scared? Really? <laughs> Okay, so you're 65. You had a birthday recently. Do you have any phobias? That I, I mean, I don't remember you having a phobia as a kid. Yeah, I got a phobia. What is it? Caterpillars. Caterpillars? How are you scared of caterpillars? I don't want to talk about it. You know, I never used to understand phobias or fears or how people can be afraid of anything until I learned that anger, when someone gets angry, usually, at least for humans, it's a response to fear. In other words, sometimes when we rage or get angry or mad or frustrated, it's really due to a fear. We've just not acknowledged that that's the fear, so it manifests itself as anger. Maybe if you feel like you're fearless and you're not afraid or anything and you don't have phobias do you rage do you get mad when you're driving and screaming at other people I do well I did I'm working real hard to stop it anger and fear serve a purpose in our emotional toolbox but when I get angry I'm learning to ask myself what am I afraid of and if I realize that my anger is the result of fear then I begin to find a way to confront whatever it is that's causing me to feel afraid and it's working most of the time Hylophobia, I use that as an example because, well, I love the woods. I can't imagine why anybody wouldn't absolutely love the woods. But there's all kinds of things in my life that make me angry that, that shouldn't. 
So yes, I have been angry, and I'm convinced that sometimes that anger is in response to fear. And normally, it's because of what other people think. Fear of rejection, it gets everybody. For some people, it comes out in sarcasm. For some people, it comes out in passive aggressive behavior. So we'll just skip that one, which I hate. But for some people, it comes out in, in furious fits of anger over things that are no big deal. Yeah, that one's me. Nathan, what are you doing? What? This is so irresponsible. What are you talking about? Use a coaster and sharpen that other knife. It's ridiculous. But I'm working on it, and here's how. Well, first of all, I'm a Christian, so that means that I pray to Jesus Christ, and I believe that Jesus can help us confront all of our, our fears, especially when we read his word, the Bible, and we actually look at what the Bible says about us. The Bible says some amazing things about humanity, that, that when God made us, we were fearfully and wonderfully made. See, that's awesome. That means you were made with reverence. You were made with excitement. You were made with anticipation and perfection, You and God can actually do some amazing things in you to change you into who you are supposed to be because sometimes life and bad decisions can knock us off track but God being that he is all-powerful all-knowing God can actually reposition your thinking and reposition your life to do amazing things and but over the past year God has given me the strength to understand people are human people are human so my fear about rejection my fear about other people's opinion well it's actually one of the reasons I started this YouTube channel I wanted to start a project that requires me to face rejection every single week and dealing with it from a, a different perspective of not whether I'm accepted or rejected, but whether or not I'm pursuing excellence, whether or not this channel gets better. Sometimes when we're inspired to do things, it's not so that the people around us can say, at a boy, at a girl. Sometimes when we're inspired to do things, sometimes it's for people that we don't even know. Sometimes it's to inspire other people to be a better them. I've taught all of my kids how to face their fears, but I even admit to them, it's a lifelong process of learning how to face that which makes us afraid. And even though I'm not a qualified psychiatrist or psychologist, I wanna to talk to you about two phobias that I can help you with right now. The first phobia is subscribophobia. We're up to 33 subscribers. Thirty-three subscribers. Who would have thought three months ago that we would have thirty-three subscribers barely advertising this channel at all, at all? We have thirty-three subscribers. Our goal is to have one hundred subscribers by Christmas, and we can't do that unless you hit that subscribe button. Listen, hitting that like button is nothing to be afraid of. All you have to do is scroll over with your mouse button or with your smartphone to that point, and you just click it, click like, just click it, click like. Just click it, click like. Please share it on your social, me social media source, whether it's Facebook or any other form. We would really appreciate that. What do you want to talk about? What do you like to talk about? Feel free to put it in the comments below. What are you scared of? Just click it, click like. For some people, the fear of flying drives them crazy. They'll never get on a plane. And flying is exactly what I'll be doing this time in about four hours. My wife is steadily packing the truck. We're going on an adventure. We're going to a conference down in Florida. We're really excited about it. We're very thankful to be able to go. I'm looking forward to getting on a plane. But I do have a couple of phobias. It doesn't have anything really to do with flying. It has to do with who sits beside you on the plane. That's even another phobia. by you on the plane so you'll be fine just a brief update on the YouTube office we are cooking with gas one step at a time next week there'll be a bookshelf back here and behind me some paintings and some really cool stuff 
We're also rebuilding a clock, a, a nice Chevrolet clock that was actually uh, built in 1947 and we're restoring it and it should go up in here. I'm really excited about that too. That's just some upcoming things we're doing here at A Nose for Life. I wanna thank my mom and my dad for participating in this video. They both wanted me to make sure that everyone knew that they were in character. That's not really who they are. My dad's a very jovial person. Uh, his inspiration for his character tonight was, uh, he said it was Fred from that 70s show. If you've ever watched that 70s show, I'm sure you get it. And mom, well, she was just being the anti-conspiracy character. That's what, what she was playing, but they were having a great time. And I'm always thankful for Nathan, or pictures of Anna, and of course, Carolyn and Crystal when she gets involved. We've got a great family. I'm, that, I'm glad, I'm thankful that they are a part of this YouTube channel. And here's one more thing. If you live in the Tennessee Valley and you want to be a part of A Nose for Life, you say, well, I've subscribed, I've liked, but I want to be a part and helping out coming up with ideas with a nose for life and be a part of it. You can. Our family is a very open family, very loving family, and we want you to be a part of our family. If you've got ideas or things that we could do, if you've got a place that you think, Bill, I think you would love this, well, we'll include you in the video and we will go and we will go on an adventure with you. Give it a try, think about it, write it in the comments below. That's where it begins, is making your comment in the comment section below and we can have a lot of fun. We've got some great things planned for this fall, a return to Big South work. We're also gonna do a maze night where we hit every single corn maze in the entire area. That was my wife's idea, and I think it's gonna be great. I'm looking forward to that. I'm Bill Marion, this is A Nose for Life. Thank you for watching. Go. Yes, I believe in conspiracies. I turned 19 in Vietnam. Only the government could do that. Yeah, I got this. <laughs> Go ahead. What do I have? Go ahead. I'm a Vietnam vet. Of course I believe in experience. No. It's on my head, Mr. PhD. And all these voices I hear with the business out of you, you know they keep me company. Because there are folks who are here who talk to the walls and no one seems to lie. Trying to reach the 